One day, Thomas Edison came home from school and gave a letter to his mom. He told her, my teacher gave it to me and told me to only give it to you. His mother's eyes were tearful as she read the letter out to her child. Your son is a genius. This school is too small for him and doesn't have enough good teachers for training him. Please educate him yourself. After many years after Edison's mother had died, and he was one of the greatest scientists of the century, he found this note which actually said, your son is mentally ill and we won't let him go to school anymore. This story of Edison touched me so deeply because I can relate to it as well. I currently speak seven languages, but back in my high school, I thought that languages were not my strongest point. I even had troubles with my native language, Ukrainian. Thing is, Ukrainian schools are a tough place. Lots of hazing and bullying, mostly on the behalf of the teachers. And I remember one of the German teachers in my school would always remind me, um, my grammar is not good enough, my vocabulary is too poor, I'm incapable of learning. It was like a knife in my heart. I would come home very upset. But there was one person who was there to cheer me up. And this was my mom. I'm sure many of us had teachers who underestimated us at high school, bullied us and didn't let us grow. But what if we take enough courage and no matter what people tell us, learn one more and many more foreign languages. Our motives can be different. New job, move into a new country, or a New Year's resolution. But the goal is the same, to master a language. So how do we do it? Firstly, it's important to understand that the payback of learning languages is not just about communicating with people. Learning a foreign language at any age develops your brain. It's been researched that bilingual and multilingual people perform better on attention tests and have better concentration. They're also better at ignoring irrelevant stimuli and focusing on relevant information. This is because the process of learning two languages at the same time and switching back and forth between them attunes the brain to auditory information. It's also essential to know. I'm sure many of you heard this phrase, it's all about positive perception. So if you convince yourself that learning languages is fun, it's easy, then the process of acknowledgement is going to be smooth. Let me share my story. One of my greatest passions are Brazilian martial arts. I do capoeira and jiu-jitsu, heard of it? So when I start learning Portuguese, I don't perceive it as a set of grammatical rules and sentences. I perceive it as a whole new world to connect with the culture of Brazil. Then take all of the opportunities you have to learn. Many of you go on vacations, but then you end up speaking English. When I go on vacations, I pretend that I don't speak English. And the only way to communicate with me is to teach me the local language. I do it because I know that the magic happens outside of your comfort zone. And it's not just about learning languages. The most important, calculate the amount of effort you want to put in what you want to achieve. Imagine that there is a ball of spread in your hand and with the each grammatical rule, the sentence you learn, you make the ball bigger, bigger, and bigger. You can stop at any time, but never quit. For some people, it's okay to be able to speak basic Russian, but some people won't come down until they read Dostoevsky, determined people. That's why you can always pause, take a breath, but never give up. 
going back to Edison, he became very emotional when he found the note. But then he opened his diary and started writing. Thomas Alva Edison was a mentally ill child who became the genius of the century because of his mom. So imagine if we take enough courage, if we ignore all of the people who didn't believe in us and keep doing what we're doing, the world will have not one, but many Edisons. And the statement that everybody can become a polyglot will no longer be a challenge. <laughs>